so once you got all your mixes done um we will have to chop them and mince them now the big issue with primo once you have all your mix is done is that it will be way too soft and stretchy so you'll have to leach it uh, just put the pieces of clay on a relatively thin setting between a regular printing paper and put a heavy book on top and leave them for at least a couple hours I honestly left mine overnight because I forgot about them <laughs> but it still works so uh, once they are nice and leached uh, because if you don't do that and it's all soft from mixing you will not be able to mince and crumble your crumbles will stick to each other and you don't want that to happen so just go ahead and mince you'll have uh, five little piles and i'll show you how tiny you need to mince <clears throat> i am going to show you both with the inch measuring ruler so you can see it has to be anywhere from 1 8 to 1 16 and with a centimeter ruler anywhere from 1 to 2 millimeters uh, as tiny as you can then just start uh, mixing um, small quantities of each of the piles i as you can see i first got some um, both of the inclusions the calcite for calcite and i put a little bit of the blue because the idea is to imitate this uh, heavy inclusion uh, lapis as i said in my pardo uh, tutorial the less inclusions in a lapis the more valuable the lapis it is so what we are making here is a four not very valuable lapis and if you want to see how real lapis looks just uh, check my pardo tutorial so as you can see i am just um, combining some of the blues together uh, then i will do some of the blues without inclusions then some of the blues with inclusions in some piles i'll have more inclusions than uh, a lazurite for lazurite the blue and in some i will have more uh, blue than the inclusions but do this until you get several piles of different um, proportions of the mix and on each of them keep mincing and tossing until you get them nicely mixed and then um I will uh, recommend you to go look in my pardo tutorial because for some reason my uh, camera flopped and it just didn't tape the part where I was putting the thing together in a block <clears throat> the difference that I did <clears throat> the thing that I did different between the um, Pardo and the Primo is that uh, I am putting the Primo I'm making it as a sheet if you want as a, as a plaque more uh, like it and I am using my acrylic block to flatten everything and you have to go about a quarter of an inch thick in order to do uh, what I am going to show you uh, the only one you don't have to do a, a plaque will be the cabochon but let's get there so I have my flattened full lapis and I'm going to use a small light bulb and some round cutters and that one is too big in the center so let me use a smaller one and just simply I'm using the largest and the smallest of the round cutters these are the the primo the polyform uh, cutting set and simply just you'll have a, a donut pretty much and cut all the way and you place that donut on the top of the lighting lightning bulb lighting bulb light bulb goodness it's too early in the morning i didn't have enough coffee <laughs> anyway uh you can use also if you have a sphere or whatever small round uh, baking base you have I use these little light bulbs and you can buy them very cheap at the dollar stores and then round up the edge 
of the future bowl and then just make a cradle out of aluminum foil and bake it for 20 minutes it's pretty much a pre-bake but it will be baked enough to withstand the next then take the um, small circle you've cut flatten it a little bit and then simply press your little bowl against that circle and just round nicely the inside you can use as you can see i'm using the rounded edge uh, end of my uh, purple roller that you can only find that hobby lobby <laughs> everybody's asking me about it I will post another link in the video description um, but that's the only place I could find it and I did not find anywhere else a rounded end uh, roller so um, then you, you turn the, the bowl upside down and you simply trim the excess and then I will be using as usual alcohol to smooth all those all that seam between the bottom of the bowl and the rest of the bowl and it's okay if it gets a little dirty because there's pigment in the blue so uh, you see it will get a little bit dirty and one more thing um, remember I said before I like to sand to do a pre-sanding and buffing so I did sand and buff the donut after I baked it on the light bulb before proceeding to the next now I'm going to make a little base for my bowl and again I'm using some of the remnants and that's the beauty about full lapis that you can just re whatever leftovers you have and there you go you have another lapis thing and this time I'm going to flatten it a little bit thinner than the rest it will be at most two millimeters and then simply cut uh, a circle using the cutter one size higher than the smaller because I want that base to be slightly wider than the bottom of the bowl and I'm going to use uh, clean wrap so the cut will be nice and uh, round beveled if you want and just check your edges to be in one piece you know, on this one it would be a little bit hard to to sand so here you do want to have your um, edge is nice as you can see I'm using the roller also to bevel a little bit more the edges and then I will recut to make sure that it's still nice and round and then again as I did for the the bottom place the ball on top of it now the thing is that uh, you have to release the the base from the working tile first arrange it nicely on the on the bowl to make sure that you have placed it exactly in the middle don't put the bowl on top of it directly only after you are sure that it is well set then you can uh, place the bowl on the tile and press and if there was any kind of deformation on the inside of the bowl, just uh, round it up a little bit more. See, I'm trying various round end utensils. And there we go. It's good to be baked. And this time uh, I will wait to bake everything else. Now let's do the totem beer amulet. For this, as I said, the beauty of using leftovers from the faux lapis I just chopped everything and then I am flattening it I'm going for a pretty much teardroppy shape because uh, that is the one of the uh, shapes uh, that the Native Americans use for the bear as a um, spirit animal as a totem animal 
there is, um, just as a side note, uh, whenever the, the Native Americans are talking about a spirit animal, that doesn't mean that there is one animal necessarily that's going to follow you. And No, the spirit animal, the totem animal, represents the, um, the species consciousness, if you want. It's a, it's a fairly uh, meta-imagery and meta-concept. So that, let's say, the wolf spirit stands for all the wolves in the world. So um, I'm going to start uh, gently cutting out my bear shape. And uh, generally the totem animals, the animal spirits in Native American uh, uh, symbology and uh, pictography are fairly simple. And as you can see, it is a rounded back and then the legs are just with another rounded thing between them you might want to keep just a slight idea of a year yes or no make sure that your legs are not too tall and uh, i try to do the year but i don't think it looks good so i'm going to give up on it Make sure your proportions are okay. Uh, if you want to get um, a good inspiration and a good model, it's simple. Just do a, a Google uh, search on images and search for Native American totem bear amulet or bear amulet. And you will see that there are some that are newer that have just the head of a bear. And then there are the original ones uh the ancient ones that look like this and they uh most of the time they do have a um, uh, lightning bolt inside them i mean it's a it's an image that looks like a lightning bolt and it usually looks like it uh, had uh, entered the bear through the mouth and it is uh jagged so see i just gave up on the whole idea of the ear because i don't think it will be sturdy enough and I am creating the lightning bolt. It will be as an inclusion and I'm going to fill it with silver. But it's very, very simple. And I'm not going to waste time on rounding and arranging the edges. I'm going to show you the full process of sanding. So you will be able to see how much easier it is to just do all that by sanding instead of fussing around for half an hour to do that when the clay is raw. So, I have the amulet, nice and done. And now let's do the cabochon. So I'm getting again all the remnants that I have and I'm going to mince them and then press them gently and create a semi teardrop if you want, a more trapezoidal form with rounded edges. And that will be pretty much it. Look, I missed a little piece. Uh, too late. And um, arrange your shape. And that is pretty much it. Again, I will do the rest when sanding. And now let's talk about sanding. As you can see, I'm starting with the 240. And that is to remove any kind of uh, big uh, flaws and I'm going to mildly sand as you can see with the very edge of the uh, sheet the edge of the little base I made for my miniature bowl and I will show you actually how you can even change the shape of your cabochon I'm doing first the front and the back and watch this see how it is all rounded the same on both sides i'm going to make a little slant on the front now remember this is 240 you can even start with a 150 the idea is that if you use a lower grit then you have to go by at most 400 but i would suggest that 200 or a 300 
uh, increasing grit because you want to remove the scratches that the lower grit will make on the polymer clay. So the 240 will bite into the clay really good, but it will also scratch it. So I will go after that with the 600, with the 400, the 600, 800, 1000, 1500 and 2000. At higher grids, there is no scratching, so all you're doing is just refining, but at lower grids, there will be scratching. And see how I'm going to actually uh, do a rounded bevel on my bare amulet. First, I am removing any kind of irregularities on the edge, on the shape of the bare amulet. And I'm using my finger and I will also be using a paintbrush to uh, sand where the legs are. And then I simply just go with higher and higher grids. And just by holding the edge gently in the little uh, crevice that is between your fingers, you will be able to obtain a nice rounded bevel edge. So, as I said, I am starting to go with higher and higher and higher grids until I end up with the very, very high ones. And then I can buff. And this is what we have. I did not show the buffing because I've shown you buffing so many times before. But this is how it looks like and you can see it's all nice shiny with beautiful rounded beveled edges. It just looks beautiful. I love this little miniature bow, it's so cute. Anyway, let's do what else we need to do. Number one, I told you I'm going to place a little bit of silvery inclusion. So I'm using Maya Gold. And I uh, remember with Maya Gold, you always have to stir it really good, exactly like with the Pebeo paints. And after I'm placing some there, I will gently scrape first the excess. And then start wiping. Remember that I made that um, lightning shape very, very deeply. So even if I wipe, there will still be some of the silver left inside. Le the last wipe, make it with a um, paper towel um, moistened in alcohol to remove any traces of silver paint. And then all you have to do is to wait for it to dry of course if you want you can put the heat gun on it a little bit but because it is in a recessed area there is no danger for it to be rubbed off now let's do a little base for our pendant and um, I am going to do a two-sided texture with the Donakato sponge on the back and that crackle texture on the front And I'm going to just cut a nice base for my pendant. And I don't want it to be too big. Now, it's true with the lapis with inclusions, you can go with big cabochons because it's fairly invaluable, uh, not uh, high value. So it will not look awkward, but still, you don't want to carry around your neck too big of a piece. So, because the, um, the cabochon is fairly large, I'm going to make the base a little bit smaller. Just to create exactly that, a base for the cabochon to be displayed on. And I'm cutting, cutting a round edge at the bottom using an oval cutter 
and that I will be baking for 10 minutes it's a pre-bake between tiles and paper so it can preserve its flatness Once it is baked, I need to place the cabochon on it and then make a little uh, setting, false setting around it. So first I am going to place some bacon bond on the back of the cabochon, then add a sheet, a very, very, very thin sheet of clay, then put some more bacon bond on the clay and then place the cabochon exactly where I need it to be. Now because it is a handmade cabochon, the back is not perfectly flat. And sometimes it can happen even with mold cabochons. So if you remember my live when I showed you how to set uh, four or real gemstones in clay, I'm going to first make a little string and that will go on the very edge right between the cabochon and the base it is on and I'm going to just stuck it in there I don't need to put bacon bond because there is bacon bond on the back of the cabochon but see I am using my sculpting tool to cram it in there and that way the cabochon will be sitting perfectly on the base and it will also provide um, a base to stick on for the full metal setting. Excellent. Now I'm taking a very, very, very uh, thin, the most, the, the um, thinnest manageable on my pasta machine and I'm going to cut a strip of it on one side uh, cut it with a, a bevel by holding your blade at a 45 angle a degree angle and then simply arrange it around the cabochon with the beveled part on top and the straight one at base level make sure it is flush with the cabochon and then gently cut to length and then smooth where it is joined you can use a little bit of alcohol and a paintbrush to make that uh, a joint be completely unnoticeable and then we'll make a little bit of besedging <laughs> so yeah I'm going I just uh, cut a strip of clay that is uh, one millimeter square in cross section I'm placing some bacon bond on the very edge of the base and then I will be placing that strip there your only issue here will be to have the strip even if it's not long enough just pull a little bit on it and you'll bring it to length uh, your only issue here would be for the strip not to be uh, sitting perfectly on the edge and that is very easily remedied make sure that you make your little seam unnoticeable smooth it out nicely and then what I use uh, is just plainly my uh, paintbrush to make sure that everything is nice and level and that is valid for both for the seam on the setting and for the seam on the I'm just simply going around with the paintbrush held at the same angle 
to make sure that everything is at the same level compared to the piece. Of course, if you want to get even more fussy, you can, but this is not something that I just wanted to show you how to make something super duper, but it's for an intermediate level and even a beginner level to be able to make. Now, uh, I baked it for 40 minutes and now I'm going to place some of Art Alchemy's aged brass and that is in the metallic line. And I'm gently uh, placing some with my finger on the wider areas. And then I will be using my rubber tipped sculpting tool, the one that is flat, to place the wax on the setting itself and even on that little beveled edge of the setting. The great thing about these uh, sculpting tools, uh, using using them for applying wax, is that they are very easy to clean with just a little bit of um, alcohol um, on a paper towel and then you just clean it and it's cleaning up just fine see and then let's do the back and then we'll have to let it set for about 15-20 minutes just to be on the safe side I've let it for like an hour because I had other things to do but make sure you don't skip any area and yeah brass when it's aged just around the house not in a moist area has this brownish uh, tinge in the recessed areas I think I showed it one time I have a whole bunch of brass chandeliers and candle holders not chandelier candle holders okay now once the wax is set you can go ahead and buff it with a soft cotton cloth until it gets that specific metallic shine that Art Alchemy waxes are so good about. Don't forget to buff the setting as well, not just the exposed, the horizontally exposed areas. And there we go. See, it looks very nice and metallic-y. Let's take a closer look. Very metallic -y. I love these waxes. So, now let's go ahead and start doing something to be able to wear the uh, amulet and the pendant, which will be very, very easy. So, first we need to poke some holes. So I'm going to use this little hand drill. Remember that this is the best hand drill I've ever tried. It's very cheap. You can find it in the in my Amazon influencer store. It's a mulder, and um, it works just fine. And the the bits are diamond tipped. They can even drill through stone. So, I made a hole on top of the pendant, I will be placing um, a jumbo jump ring through which I'm simply pulling a chain. Remember to always open the jump rings on the side. And there we go, ready to be worn. Now for the little bear, I'm going to use one of those uh, screw eye pins with a little bit of Loctite and simply dip the end of the screw eye pin in a little bit of Loctite, then place it in and start screwing it in and then you'll have to let it be for at least a few hours. I generally let it be overnight. So there you go, the full lapis lazuli with inclusions in Primo. Happy clean!